It's time for the Fred Jackson Show with running back Fred Jackson and co-host Bob Koshinski. Brought to you by Duville College, Educating for Life, and Gate Circle Wine and Liquor. Now from the WBBZ TV studio at the Eastern Hills Mall, welcome Fred Jackson and co-host Bob Koshinski. And good evening. Welcome to our final Fred Jackson show and the star of the show, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Fred Jackson with us. Our special guest tonight from the Buffalo Sabres, Pat Coletta is in the house. <coughs> and of course, Brad Gelber's here to take your tweets and Facebook questions in just a little, little while. Let's hear it for Brad Gelber. <laughs> Now, tonight is also the night that we're going to draw for the uh, Reimer Furnace, uh, a value of $4,500. So stay tuned. If you enter it at the end of the show, we're going to pick our winner. <clears throat> but right now, we're going to kind of go down memory lane with Fred Jackson. <laughs> Fred, that's quite a T-shirt you got there, too. Um, yeah. Is that a, uh, some kind of uh, rights deal or something you signed up for? Or are <laughs> you going to be in uh, the third movie? Or? No, I mean, I hope so, but no, no plans to. Well, uh, your agent, you know, Ron, Ron Rakuya has done quite a bit for you. Uh, which we're going to talk about in the show. I did, the cartoons might be next. I'm telling you, I've told him, you know, a, a, tr a bunch of times that I want to be in a movie, so hopefully he can get that taken care of. But this shirt, I have it on strictly for Coletta. You know, when I see these guys, I think of him. You know, <laughs> they're always in this stuff, and he's always in the stuff, so I had to put it okay. on. Okay. We're going to have Pat on a little later. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to talking, because we've, we've got some video of Pat Coletta's uh, Lego uh, collection, mm -hmm. which I know, and he's a comic book uh, collector, mm -hmm. too, so... All right, Fred, uh, it's been a couple of weeks since the season ended, um, you know, and I've heard you do a few interviews. There's one thing that's, obvi that's obvious if you watch the playoffs. The play of the quarterback is so important in these playoff games. You address that somewhat, that that's really, that's somewhere E.J. Manuel needs to be if this team is going to take that next step up. Yeah, I mean, uh, for, for us to be an elite team, we have to have a guy at the, at the quarterback position that can win football games for us. And uh, we have all the faith in the world in him. We think he's that guy. You know, he's just got to develop, you know, continue to get more playing time, stay on the field, stay healthy. You know, and uh, I believe once he, he does that, he can be that guy for us that, that takes us to that next level and gets us into the playoffs. We've got some statistics. Let's look at the offensive statistics for this team. Uh, you were number two in the NFL in running, uh, rushing the football, uh, which, is, which is pretty impressive. Uh, you know, looking at your, your total, I mean, really, when you consider the fact that you and, and CJ were splitting carries quite a bit, it's impressive uh, the amount of yards you both gained, uh, you know, together. Yeah, you know, that, that, that's the thing that we try and do. We want to be out there, you know, making plays whenever our number's called and uh, keeping each other fresh. You know, we feel like if we, we keep each other fresh and we're out there uh, ready to go, you know, we can make more plays like that. And that's what we try to do this whole season. You know, uh, of, of course, you know, each one of us want to be out there to get, you know, be the bell cow, you know, carrying it 20, 25 times. Uh, but that's not how it worked out. You know, hopefully we can continue to do things as well as we did this year and uh, take a lot of pressure off of the quarterback. Defensively, and we've got some stats, uh, the team played awesome at times, and there were other times like the f season finale against New England where the Patriots uh, had so much success running the ball, although they had success running the ball this weekend too, so mm -hmm. it obviously wasn't a fluke. But, you know, one thing that stuck out, this team was very good at sacking the opposition's quarterback. Yeah, you know, and uh, that's just it. You know, if we can get our defense to play well, you know, the way that they have in some of the games, you know, get them to play like that consistently, that's just going to make us a better team as well. And I know that's something that they'll focus on. You know, uh, we're, they're going to be good at getting to the quarterback. You know, with the defensive scheme that, you know, Petten puts in, you know, his, his whole thing is getting to the quarterback and making them uncomfortable. So they'll continue to get, get better at that, uh, continue to take uh, quarterbacks to the ground, get them off their, uh, their spots and uncomfortable. And uh, as long as we can get those guys to play consistently in the run game and, you know, continue to bring that, that aggressive to the game. I think they'll be all right. Okay, this is going to be a fun show. We've got some fun things to look at. You were in New York last week, last Monday, with Regis Philbin, and yeah. we got a shot, and there's you and Regis smiling, and you're wearing all the bling I see <laughs> for the Big Apple. How was Regis? Regis was a tremendous guy. You know, uh, not the co-host that I have, you know, here on stage with me. 
you know. Uh, but, you know, he's a tremendous dude. You know, he gave me a lot of props. You know, he told me I was one of the best running backs to ever play the game. So, you know, anytime somebody says that to you, you, you think highly of them. You're not going to forget that, are you? Never. You know, that came from Regis. <laughs> <laughs> and this weekend, you were filming a commercial out at the stadium. We got some shots. Uh, it was a chicken wing eating commercial. It was a Visa commercial. Tell us a little bit about it. Uh, that's just about the extent that I could tell you. you know, oh, it's it a, a secret. Yeah. Uh, you know, it was one of those, uh, a fantasy. You know, obviously, one of the guys, his, his football fantasy was to have a wing eating contest with some Bills players. And, uh, you know, I was one of the guys out there doing it. So it'll be a lot of fun. I'm, I, I can't wait to see the finished product. You know, I think it'll be a lot of fun for guys to watch. So we're going to see it in the Super Bowl? Uh, yeah. Uh, I think one of the things, they wanted to try and get it done by this weekend, so hopefully they can, you know, get that accomplished, but it, it will be something that airs during the Super Bowl. All right, put the uh, shot back up of Fred and Aaron Williams, because I'll give the Reader's Digest version. They told Fred you could tr play a trick on one player, so you brought up Aaron because it was, it was, you were supposed to act like you're going to have chicken wing contest, but his wings were ultra hot. Yeah. Yeah. And then, <laughs> so <laughs> I know I was wrong for that, but <laughs> it was a lot of fun. They said, you got to play a trick on one guy. Who's it going to be? And, you know, Aaron's like a little brother, you know, and he was there. So, uh, of course he got the, the brunt of the joke and, you know, he swallowed his chicken wing and, uh, about three seconds later, he, he realized that, you know, it wasn't... A little delayed <laughs> reaction. Was. Yeah, a little delayed reaction. And, you know, once it hit him, you know, he, he went running to the bathroom. So it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Nice, Fred. Yeah. Nice. You know, I, I but that's what little him. brothers are for. Exactly. Yeah. He was yeah. talking, and he was telling me, I'm about to, you know, kick your butt in this wing eating contest. And I was like, oh, you're, you're going to... You gonna think he'd me. know you by now, but anyway. He doesn't. Hey, Pat Coletta's next. Stay tuned. More on the Fred Jackson Show right after this. Welcome back to Fred Jackson Show. And our guest tonight on the final show, a good friend of Fred Jackson's, ladies and gentlemen from the Buffalo Sabres, Pat Coletta. <laughs> Pat, you were on the show uh, last year, and I know that you and Fred are pals from uh, way back. Uh, this is not the type of season you were hoping to have. Uh, you got suspended, you got sent down to Rochester, but then Ted Nolan came in and you would seem to be the ideal player for a coach like Ted Nolan and then the injury. Well, yeah, it uh, hasn't been an ideal season for me, but, uh, um, you know, what, ki what doesn't kill you make you, makes you stronger. Um, and the way I look at it is if, as if uh, I don't come back better from this injury, then I wasted it. So um, that's my goal right now is to get back uh, to be a better player. And uh, in the meantime, you know, help out in the community and, and do whatever I can to, to be an asset to Buffalo. What's the, uh, the time frame and, and things like that that they got you on right now? Well, so far, it's like uh, three more months before I can get on the ice mm. from what I'm uh, being told. But uh, um, as of right now, I'm, I'm far beyond where I'm supposed to be, which is a, a good thing. But uh, I think they might be holding me back just a little bit. Um, but uh, like I said, next season I'll be back for sure. And then... Um, you know, I haven't told the doctors or anything, but my goal is to be back maybe for a game or so this season, but um, I guess <laughs> we'll have to talk to them about that. Yeah, they might have something to say about that. Mm -hmm. There's been a world of change for the Sabres this year. Uh, even, again, last, last week, Tim Murray hires a general manager. Uh, Patrick brought in to be consultant. You got Pat LaFontaine. You got Ted Nolan. Uh, the community is very excited. How do, the, how do the, you think the players are about what's going on? Well, I, from the guys I've talked to of late, they're uh, extremely excited. And um, I've gotten the pleasure to meet uh, Pat LaFontaine and Ted Nolan uh, a couple times. And, and the times we've talked, uh, it's been unbelievable. I've always looked up to, especially Pat LaFontaine growing up, uh, you know, watching him play and seeing the things that he's done. Uh, so it's a tremendous honor for, for him to even be able to talk to me, and, and he's a guy I look up to. And as for uh, Ted Nolan, you know, I remember him jumping around on the bench after, uh, I believe, Derek Plant scored the goal versus Ottawa. So, um, you know, I'm really excited to get the opportunity to, uh, to work with um, both of those men, and, and uh, you know, that's my goal is to get back there. Now, I said at the top of the show, I know why you guys hit it off, because we've already covered. You're a big comic book guy. Mm -hmm. You love the Incredible Hulk. We've got some video here, comics of Buffalo Sabres. Pat, you've got a whole collection of uh, comic book collectibles. It looks like trading cards, and you're a huge Lego guy. Tell yeah, us about it. I mean, 
Uh, as you see, I have, uh, I've had some surgeries over my years, and uh, I've had a lot of spare time on my hands. <laughs> you put all this together? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, I try to get, you know, my girlfriend and my buddies to help me out, but they don't want anything to do with it. So <laughs> I sit up to wee hours of the night, and, uh, you know, if it keeps me busy and keeps my mind off uh, um, things and, and that are going on with my hands or my knee or whatever it may be, so how do you keep Fred's kids' hands off of it when they come over to visit? You know, I give, them, I give certain pieces <laughs> out once. Sometimes they get doubles. So I'll give them out to, to kids or whatever. But, uh, no, I just I put them together, and, uh, you know, that's about it. Okay, I know we've got some good questions on Twitter, and Brad Galber standing by. Brad, what do we have? Yeah, uh, the first question is going to be for Pat and Fred, actually. Uh, it's from Zane Bancroft, and he wants to know, Pat, if you played football, which position would you play? And then secondarily, Fred, uh, what do you think the Bills should address in the offseason? Well, <laughs> I could probably and will never play in the NFL. <laughs> so um, I guess I would maybe play safety. But uh, I think I'd want to score a touchdown so I could spin the ball and rip open my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> He'd be a punter. <laughs> yeah, a punter probably, yeah. No, nah, um, nah, I can see you out there playing safety, definitely. I can see that. Uh, addressing in the off in the off season, you know, anything that's going to make us better. So, um, you know, I think they'll evaluate us as a team, you know, look at all our, our, our strengths and weaknesses and, you know, try and, you know, make us better in whatever it is they decide to that we're weak at. You know, for me, uh, you know, that's a hard thing to comment on because I love all my teammates and, uh, you know, I don't want to throw anybody under the bus. But but you don't want him to draft a running back. Maybe I mean, th this is this is weird about this. Every year that we've drafted a running back, the next season I've had a great season. So oh, okay. So. Next question. Yep, the next one's from Jay, and it's for Fred. He wants to know: Does any one loss stick out in your mind more than the rest? And do you watch playoffs, the playoffs, or is it too painful? Uh, I wouldn't say one sticks out more than another. You know, they're all tough to deal with. You know, uh, anytime, you know, you're a competitor, you want to win. So, you know, that, that's how I view it. You know, any loss is a tough one. Um, but I think anytime you lose a game in a division, those should be the ones that sting a little bit more. Um, but, yeah, I definitely watch football, you know, in the playoffs. I'm, I'm a huge football fan. You know, I, I got guys that, you know, I'm rooting for, you know, uh, and, you know, I try and see what they're doing, and hopefully, you know, uh, they get a chance like that guy on the screen right there. You know, I talked to him, you know, day of the game, day after the game. You know, I talked to him today. You know, he's excited about his opportunity, and hopefully they could, uh, you know, take advantage of it. Okay, Brad, next question. Yep, this one's from uh, Howard and it's for Pat. He wants to know, how much different is it going back to the AHL after having been in the NHL for so long? And you already mentioned this, but he said, have you got to talk to the guys on the Sabres since then? Yeah, I've talked to, uh, uh, like Fred said, uh, I love all my teammates, and they've been tremendous to me over the past, you know, few months here. And um, the transition back to the AHL is is basically just speed. Um, in the NHL, you got to think faster. It's, it's the puck's moving faster. In the AHL, it's not quite there yet, but it's a lot younger league and and that sort of thing. So. Um, you kind of have to slow yourself down because you're, you're maybe um, ahead on the play or, or something like that. But speed overall is the major transition. Okay, last one, Brad. Yep, uh, this one's going to be from uh, Vince Keymaster, and he wants to know, uh, since Fred is the Hulk and Bob looks like Thor, uh, what superhero would Pat be? Well, it's definitely not Iron Man because I'm up here hurt, so. <laughs> uh, I don't know. They... Wolverine. Yeah, well, we're, that's what I'm going for, yeah. I think. Yeah. There you go. I think uh, you've come back for quite a few injuries, I can say, Wolverine. There you mm -hmm. go. Some suggested maybe Captain America. You're an American-born player. True. I like Wolverine, though. I like, yeah. Uh, yeah, Cap doesn't I like the wear beard it. I'm growing here. Cap doesn't have the beard. <laughs> okay, when we come back, we're going to have the Hot Shot Challenge. And we have the stats, Fred, uh, of your hot, st hot Shot Challenge standings. Uh, throughout the year, you're 10, 4, and 1. Uh, you can see you've had a couple losses. Uh, it, receivers were your downfall there yeah. for a while. And that last loss against Jim Kelly, I have to say, you, uh, you, you kind of deferred to Jim. I did. I yeah. had to. I can't beat Jim in Buffalo. I mean, what type of person would do that? You know, he's, <laughs> so, you know, and yeah. I'll tell him that, too. I have told him that, you know, uh, but I couldn't beat Jim. No, well, you're a good guy. You're a good guy. <laughs> but we'll see how good a guy Pat Collette is when he goes against his buddy Fred Jackson. The Hot Shot Challenge next right here on the Fred Jackson Show.
Members of our studio audience receive a gift certificate and compete for prizes from Dave & Buster's. Watch the games, play the games at the Eastern Hills Mall. And Poster Art, Buffalo's only poster and t-shirt gift gallery, featuring the Fred X t-shirt, also at the Eastern Hills Mall. And welcome back to the Fred Jackson Show. It's time now for our Hot Shot Challenge. And our two contestants that we have... Cole. Cole, where do you go to school, Cole? Transit Middle. And what grade are you in? Six. Okay, Cole, you're playing with Pat Coletta. Okay, and this is? Aaron. And what school do you go to, Aaron? Grand Island. Grand Island. What grade are you in? Six. Okay, did you ever play football before? No. Okay, well, you're going to be with Fred Jackson, okay? So, Cole, you go first because you're the visiting team. Pick any, any target you want and, and let it fly. Oh, almost got it through. Okay, Aaron, you're up. Let's go. You can put one in there. Oh, okay, Pat. You can take the lead right here, ladies and gentlemen. Pat Coletta from the Buffalo Sabres. He got it in. The pressure is on. Fred Jackson right here. And here it goes. Fred. Pat Coletta knocks off Fred Jackson in the final Hot Shot Challenge. So your record, Fred, 10, 5, and 1. But still a winning record. Very impressive. I'll take that any day. Okay. You know. We're going to take a break. We'll be back to wrap up the final Fred Jackson show and give away a furnace compliments of Rhymer Heating right after this. Welcome back. We'd like to thank our sponsors, Duval College, Gate Circle Wines and Liquor, and of course, Rhymer Heating and Air. We have Jerry Pullo from Rhymer, and tonight's the night we're going to draw for that free furnace, Jerry. I imagine you guys had to be really busy last week with that cold spell. Oh, yes, it was crazy out there. Now, I know you're a football fan. I know you're a Bills fan. I am. Yeah. I've seen the commercials. You're, you're dressed up. Did you play football? No. No? No, I played hockey. Oh, okay. Well, that's fitting that we have Pat Coletta on the show. So we're going to draw now for this free furnace. This is a $4,500 value, and this is, I imagine, it's got to be, you know, from Rhymer Heating, it's got to be top of the line. Absolutely. We put nothing in but the best. Okay. So if we could have a drum roll, please. We selected a name at random, qualified contestants. And the winner is Kathy Tyron of Amherst, New York. Let's hear it for Kathy Tryon. Kathy Tryon of Amherst, New York. $4,500 value. So congratulations, Kathy. And we'll be contacting you and setting up the install. Absolutely perfect. Yeah, and, and I think, Fred, are you going to go hook it up? As long as he's with me, yeah. you know, make sure I'm doing it right, because uh, yeah, we want it to work, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Maybe we'll send you in the summertime, so if it doesn't work. <laughs> we can fun. say it does. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's, let's, ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Pat Coletta and our final Fred Jackson show from the Buffalo Sabres. Let's hear it for Fred, or for Pat. And Pat, you told me during the break you want a copy of you defeating Fred in the Hot Shot Channels because you guys are always competitive and now you got on the record, you were able to knock him off. Yeah, I just wanted to add it to the collection of the things I beat him at. So um, <laughs> it's almost bigger than my Lego collection, believe it or not. So, oh, wow. Uh, wow. No, it's a uh, uh, pleasure being here and uh, uh, thanks for having me here. Well, we wish you all the best. Get healthy. We want to see you back out there on the ice. All right, thank you. Okay. Fred. Uh, Last show, uh, by the way, you are one of the greatest running backs in the NFL. I don't want Regis to have one up on me. Yeah, one of the greatest. And real quick, your prediction, we've got uh, two games left in the Super Bowl. What's your prediction? Uh, I think it's going to be Seattle and Denver. You know, I'm, I'm actually hoping for that. You know, I got, you know, my, my favorite coach of all time is running back coach in Denver, you know, and I want Marshawn to get there. So it would be, I don't know who I'll root for, but, you know, it would be uh, good to watch that game. Okay, and you're buddies with Marshawn Lynch, so I'm sure you're going to be talking to him throughout the week. Without a doubt. You know, I'll probably go home and uh, shoot him in Texas. See how he's feeling now. Okay, Fred, it's been great being with you again for another year. We ought to have you back next year. Ladies and gentlemen, Fred Jackson, it's been a pleasure. He's one of the best. We want to thank everybody. We want to thank Reimer Heating. Thank our sponsor, Duval and Gates Circle Wine. They're chanting your name, Fred. Freddie, the incredible Fred Jackson. Good night, everybody. Have a great season. It's been a great year. Have a good night and a much better tomorrow. Good night.